Hello viewers, I'm Private Dave. Today I am bringing you a uh, AMX 5120 review. It's a tier 9 heavy tank, in case you don't already know. Uh, it's a pretty good tank, actually. Um, it's the tier 9 French heavy tank, leads to the AMX 50B. And as you can see, it's kind of a tall tank. Um, and has a pretty big gun. Now, with this, when you get the tank stock, uh, without the tracks, you can use the gun from the 5100, which is a good thing because that's not a bad gun at all. And um, let's see. So for the firepower, the penetration is it's not bad per se, but it's it's not really it'll get you through the grind to the top gun to say the least. It has 300 alpha damage so not bad there. A pretty high uh, damage per minute. Uh, you know, it, it has a good rate of fire. It is an auto loader though and I'm carrying it to the IS-8 which I think kinda plays similar to the uh, the 5120. Personally I think both of them play kinda like they don't really play like heavy tanks per se. They play more like heavy medium tanks really. Um, the 5120 is a tank that you you kind of want to be at the front line, but you don't want to waste your hit points early on in the game. You want to kind of conserve them and play smart at the beginning. Uh, that way, when it comes to later game, you can you know go out, flank enemy tanks, finish people off, and pretty much poach kills and damage for the most part. Uh, you get six shells in the magazine for the 100 millimeter, um, which isn't bad. Uh, so there's that. Um, let's see. For accuracy, the the thing with the um, the French heavy tanks, they have a long aiming time. It's like 30 seconds or 0.3 or whatever. Uh, it's it's pretty bad actually, but generally speaking, by the time you by the time you reload the second round in the chamber, you're already going to have mostly aimed. So it's only going to take another couple seconds to actually aim. Um, the accuracy isn't good either. It's they're both kind of I'm not gonna say bad, but they're average really. Um, the problem with the the French heavy tanks again, except for the 50B, their elevation and gun depression is horrible. It's just bad, as you can see in the videos after this. It's it's extremely bad. Um, yeah, as you can see, the the IS-8, the elevation on that is 15. Elevation on the 50 6. Uh, depression is better than the IS-8, but the IS-8 is a Russian tank, so take that with a grain of salt there, I guess. Um, turret traverse isn't bad. Pretty good, actually. Chassis traverse isn't bad. It 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 is kind of like a medium tank, really. It's just a tall medium tank, in my opinion. Uh, good power. Um, as I said, it's it's pretty quick. It goes 65, the ISA goes 50. It's extremely quick in reverse as well, going 20. Um, the terrain resistance isn't... It's not bad, I'm gonna say. It's not terrible, really. But, uh, actually I think it's kinda good, in my opinion, but... Compared to the ISA, I guess, it's not... as good. Um, so yeah, let's see, the health, 1,750, which is 50 less than the IS-8, but you get, you're getting an autoloader, the IS-8 doesn't. Little stats for the, the modules there, if you, you're interested in that. The armor isn't, it's not really good, really. Then again, no French tank is really good for armor. Here you go. 
that's the armor right there. You're going to see like 170, 120-ish on the slope. Which can bounce some shots, but at tier 9, don't expect to bounce anything on the front plate unless you get a really lucky angle. Or they just don't aim for shit, really. It's not even that angled, really. See, it's, it's not that big of an angle. Yeah. So... Obviously the tracks are spaced armor, the gun counts as spaced armor because unless you hit it with I think high explosive you're not going to do jack shit. Um, it has a lot of track really, but if you can shoot in between the track, or slightly above the track, or just ignore the track altogether because this, that's only 130 or 120-ish at that angle, it's 80, like 80 unangled. Really, and that's including the side of the turret, which is pretty much a, a guaranteed penetration for any tank at tier nine, or that gets into tier nine. So if you just aim there or a, slightly above the tracks, you're gonna penetrate the tank. Um, the turret is probably the best armor on the tank, really. It's 114 right there. That includes the underbelly, apparently. Uh, the little hatch or gun mount mount there is like 90. Um, as you can see, it goes up to like 130-ish at certain spots. At that right there at this angle is 223. So you see, it's it's better than the front plate, that's for sure. So if you're gonna shoot this tank, don't shoot the turret. Or if you shoot the turret, shoot for like around there and be at a good angle, or go for the side of the turret. Um, also a weak spot on the front of the tank, the little hatch, as you can see, little hatch. But you probably won't even need to shoot the hatch because you could probably pen the front plate. Uh, back of the tank, nothing really special. 60 armor. It might block a few scout tanks, but that's about it. Um, let's see, the cupolas. Yeah, like 60. That's... You're probably going to penetrate those if you even need to aim for those, but you probably won't. As you can see, the top of the tank, uh, very lightly armored. Artori loves French tanks. Uh, they don't even really need to hit the top of the tank to penetrate it. Uh, onto the top gun. Top gun is the good gun, in my opinion. Not that the, uh, the bottom gun is bad. But, um, you know, it's... It's better, in my opinion. Alright, so you get pretty good penetration, 257, compared to 258 for the IS-8. And the IS-8, in my opinion, has good penetration. You don't... For the most part, I've never had to fire AP, uh, APCR in this. The AP is generally good enough. You do 400 damage per shot. It's not as good as the IS-8 with 440, but yet again, the IS-8 doesn't get four rounds in the clip. The damage per minute is pretty good. Module damage is 165. The reload time is 33 seconds. Now, I don't think that's where you're going to get when you first get the tank. You're going to probably get like 35 or something up there. With my, with the loadout I recommend, I run gun lane drive, vertical stabilizer, and vents. Because, as you can see, the vents pretty much improve everything for the most part. They improve your specific power, your resistance, your um, your maneuverability, and your firepower, um, and your view range. So it's, it's generally a good thing to have on some tanks. And then with these two, it's generally just getting that aiming time down. Because the aiming time on the French tanks can be kind of agonizing at times. So you get four in the magazine, like I said. It's not bad. You're not getting as many as the... The 100 millimeter, but you could do a lot of damage considering that's four rounds, 400 damage per shot if you're lucky, or if you're unlucky. Um, you get 40 rounds max compared to I think 60 on the other one. Uh, the accuracy and aiming time, yet again, pretty bad. It's not really good per se. Uh, elevation depression, horrible. Still horrible. You're not. Don't rely on 
being able to shoot up or down with this gun really. It's just not not good at all. Um, so yeah, it's it's kind of uh, just try to get on a level ground really if you're gonna shoot in this tank, because otherwise you're gonna do you're gonna find yourself not being able to actually hit the target. You're gonna have to re reposition constantly and all that crap. But enough of that. Let's move on to the reviews, or not reviews, the uh, the replays. All right. So I'm platooned with I'm Gandhi and his ISA. Um, we're gonna go to the city. Gonna go to here and hopefully get shots on anything peeking around that corner. And just going downhill, you can see them gaining quite a bit of speed. Like I'm already going 65 downhill. Uh, 70 now, and I think Gandhi's stock. I'm pretty sure he's stock actually. And even going uphill is not really bad per se. See, I'm, I'm going like almost 30, 25, 30 ish uphill, which is not bad at all. Now, I just loaded my clip, and with the 5120 and the 5100, which if you play the 5100 all the way through, you probably know by now. It's important to realize when to save your rounds if you have extra and when to reload. Generally, if you have tanks around you and you have like one or two shells left in the chamber, you want to save those in case they try pushing you. Where you can either do damage and kill them or you can track them and get away for a reload. Uh, so it's important to keep. pay attention to what's going on around you, really. So I'm peeking around this corner. I generally don't want to get hit early on in the game. I want to save my hit points for later on so I can later on in the game take a hit or two and then unload my clip into an enemy tank and kill it. Gandhi fires. Ice 8 fires so I'm going to peek out. I luckily track it. Now the Ice 8 has a good angle so I want to shoot the underbelly and penetrate that. That one goes high, hits the pike nose. That's obviously going to be a ricochet. That one luckily goes low and I'm going to reload now. I got two lucky hits into him and one track, so I'm reloading, keeping an eye on things going on around me. There's a Patton pushing our T-34 and a Type 61 pushing our T-32, which could be a bad situation. And now there's an E-75 pushing in as well. I'm nearly reloaded, so I'm gonna position myself to deal with this E-75. I want, I'm gonna want to track it so I can't get away, and I can unload a full clip into it. So go for the track. He repairs the track, takes damage, but I'm gonna finish him off before he gets away. See if I was shot in that uh, KV-4, I do not. Um, I see Patton pushing Gandhi, so I'm gonna back up and try getting shots in that, but he runs away. And Gandhi has help from the uh, T-30 now, so he's fine. Now I'm gonna try getting shots on that, but he dies, go for the Patton. Uh, that was a wasted shot right there. I should not have taken that, to be completely honest. Now I'm gonna see if I have a shot in that T-110E4 and uh, hopefully put a round into him to actually track him. I don't track him, but I do damage, which is good. I'm now up to nearly 2,000 damage, which is a good thing. Keep an eye on what's going on around me. There's a T-30 peeking out. And that E4 and Type 61 look like potentially easy prey, so I'm gonna focus them first. Type 61's dead, so I'm gonna go around behind E4, potentially take a hit from the Tiger 2, but this is why I've saved my hit points for. And I can take the pressure off our mouse, really. I'm gonna give this E4 the good news now. And you're gonna see the gun depression even at this range. See, he's only backing up slightly, and I'm having a hard time, somewhat. Put a couple shots in that Tiger too, and now I need to get to cover. I'm gonna repair my driver so I can get away if I do get attacked, but I probably won't at this point. We're winning 8-2. So reloading, looking around to see what I can go for next. 
I only have 3,500 damage. I want to improve that. Generally speaking, uh, in average, I try to get 4 to 5k damage in this tank, if I'm lucky. So, I'm going to want to... I see the T-30. I'm going to go around behind him and support Gandhi, if he is rushing Gandhi, but I doubt it. And he does have a good amount of hit points left, so I can farm a bit of damage. This is unlucky. I fire at the lower, pl uh, not the lower plate, the, uh, the engine. However, I didn't fully aim, and you can see that aim time. And the shot goes up into his, um, the back of his turret and bounces on the side. Alright, so that was the first class mastery badge. Uh, got a couple good hits on enemy tanks. Did the most damage with 4,195. Three kills, 1,155 experience. Um, Gandhi came in fourth for damage. Pretty good experience for a stock tank. That's not bad. 15 shots fired, 14 hits, and 12 penetrated, which is not bad at all. I probably should have waited down that T30. Probably could have gotten more damage on him, but uh, it happens. I took one hit. And keep in mind, yes, I was playing kind of cautiously, and I only took one hit. But look at what I did to support the team. I got around behind an E4 that was attacking our, our mouse, finished him off, getting the damage for that as well. And got around behind the T30 and killed that before it could damage Gandhi anymore. So, there's a difference between playing cautiously and saving your hit points and playing cowardly and not doing anything. Yes, I'm saving my hit points, but I'm still doing stuff and helping the team, which is an important thing to keep in mind when playing the 5120. Yes, you want to save your hit points, but you still want to help your team and make sure they don't die around you, um, which is never a good thing, really. Um, so that, that's a good thing to keep in mind, really. And yes, this was during times five. That's why I got that much. So moving on to the next game. All right, it's a tier nine game on Swamp. Very cool. Yeah, Swamp. I'm platooned with Sean Paul and his um, Waffle Charger Panzer IV. I think is what's called. Yeah. So we're gonna go to the right flank, and I'm gonna go here, potentially shoot anything crossing the bridge. Sean Paul is going to go back here and support if anything pushes, and he can watch that flank as well. Now, keep in mind, for the love of God, people, don't go to this flank. Just If you're going to go to this flank, just hold the corner or sit here. Don't push like a fucking idiot like these people. Like, seriously, you should know better by now. So I see a T41. going to hit him once. Aim ahead. Hit him again. Now, keep in mind that I am aiming ahead, so when I reload, and I track him there, so I'm hoping the team can hit him, but as you noticed, most of our tanks are going to the left. Fun fact, most of those tanks are going to do zero damage as well, so good job, guys. Good job. You, uh, you're, you're a real credit to the team. Fun fact to note here, we had five tier nines going into this game. Two of them are going to do absolutely nothing and die in this flank, and the third one, the T-54, is a bot. And, you know what's sad? The bot does the third most damage on the team, behind Sean Paul and I. Yeah. Yeah. That, what the hell. Just, seriously, why? <sighs> Alright, so I tracked the E-4, E, not E-4, uh, the E-1. No one hit it. Sean Paul hit it, but he bounced somehow, so that was unlucky, and he was the only one that actually shot it, so it's alive. Now, I'm, I'm seeing if I can hit the side or the side of the turret on that, but that one misses. That one hits it in tracks. So I got the um, the assistance there, because he got hit after he tracked. That one hits, and I'm on a reload now. Got to keep an eye on that IS-6, because if he pushes up, he can spot me. And look, look at that. You're all trapped in a corner now. The Leopard one has already died. 
we've already lost the Object 416, the T28 prototype. Our best scout is dead because he went over here and somehow died. And, you know, it's the Panzer SFL, which is a green player, went over there and died as well. So, you know. Then you have a Tiger 1 in this corner, a T43 just sitting in the middle there. So, putting shots into the side of the IS-6. That's a good hit. I'm kind of lucky it didn't go towards the turret. Another good hit, and I'm reloading. Hopefully someone can actually kill that. T-44 kills it, thankfully. And we're losing 2-7. We are, in fact, losing 2-7. And I've done already 3,000 damage. So, it's off to a uh, good start. As you can see, they've already died. Because, look at all the tanks up there. Look at all the tanks up there, and they just pushed across. They didn't sit there, or there, or there. They pushed into the open, up to there, and died. If you're going to go to that flank, don't push across an open fucking field. And this is where I make my mistake. I try killing this guy off quickly to uh, secure this flank so we don't have to deal with that guy, that side, and I screw that up, taking a hit from the tortoise. I'm going to take, like, two more. So I've already given away my hit points, which is something you should never do in the 5120. It's only four minutes into the game, and I'm already on 500 hit points. So this was kind of what not to do in it. But I needed to get rid of that E1. Otherwise, we would have to deal with tanks coming across from there, there, and then him peeking around his corner, getting side shots on us. It's kind of a situation where you're somewhat forced into doing it, but the way I executed it was horrible and it's gonna actually screw us over later on the fact that I don't have hit points so I saved that one shell for that scout but he's dead so I'm gonna go for a reload yet again keep an eye on what's going on around you there's a leopard PTA up there I don't need you know Sean Paul which is the one actually helping me at this point dying and he's already lost most of his, his hit points to do that in leopard and our T54 is still sitting there as a bot You can see they have a WZ-120 and a tortoise there. They have their Jag Tiger up there, their Leopard PTA there. So we're, it, it's pretty bad. We're losing 5-10. And honestly, there's not much we can do about it. I've just taken a hit from an invisible Leopard PTA. So I'm on even less hit points. So one hit and I'm just dead at this point. And as you can see, I'm pointing to the full health T-54. Like, what the fuck are you doing? At least spot or take hits or something. And I can't take any hits, so I can't help Sean Paul as much as I would have liked to help him. So I have to play cautiously, because one hit from anything, I'm dead. I could take a hit from an AT-7. Is it an AT-7? Yeah, AT-7, and I could die. So, Type 59, here's that AT-9. 444, good roll. That one was unlucky, I should've just saved that. Jag Tiger aiming at me. Luckily the Type 59 is paying not a single bit of attention. Get a high roll, 430, and knock him out. I'm reloading, and that Leopard's gonna push forward and kill me at this point. Because he knows I fired four shots, he knows I'm reloading, and he knows I'm a one-hit kill for him. So he's just gonna push forward, kill me, and yeah, that's it. Sean Paul can't do anything, he has 60 hit points, one hit from anything is going to kill him as well. T-54 still hiding there for some reason, and it, it kind of shows that you're not a heavy tank early, you can't bounce shots, you can't, you can somewhat carry a team, but you need your team to be somewhat competent in the tank as well, which didn't happen in this game. Like. Two of our tier 9s threw their lives away for the... <sighs> Whatever. Like, why would you just, just throw your life away? And then the third one was just camping the base. So, it, 5k damage, and it's a loss. There's not much you can really do in that situation besides get the damage and hope that your team can pull itself together, but it can't. So, we lose 7-5. Onto the F-Brown result. That was a third class mastery badge and high caliber.
Um, I didn't do as well as I did in the last game, I don't think. I did more damage, but I don't think I did as well for the team, to be honest. Highest damage, and second is the which is Sean Paul. And then, you know, the, the third place on the team is the bot. Now, let's see. 1390, he died on the right flank, did no damage. IS-6 died, no damage. T-28 prototype died, no damage. Tiger died, no damage. Panzer SFL, which was one of the better players on the team, died, zero damage. Object 416, 200 damage. T-44, which actually helped me a bit, 500 damage. T-43 did more damage than the T-44. Really? Like, come on. The Super Pershing did better than most of the team. The Super Pershing. It's a Super Pershing, for Christ's sake. Come on. IS-8 didn't really do much, in my opinion. The Leopard, either. They didn't even get over it. They just kind of threw their tanks away on that left flank for no apparent reason. And, yeah, as you see by the end. How many people did the zero damage? None. They at least got 100 damage. Well, 90, pretty much. Um, IS-6, 170. Panther, 280. IS-2, 334. Panther 2! The Panther 2 did better than 90% of our team. The Panther 2. Look, look at this. That's actually a team right there. That is what a team is. This is not a team. This is a three-man show, and the third man is a bot, so that says a lot. 19 shots fired, 14 direct hits, 5,000 damage, I received 5 hits, 5 penetrated, yet again, no armor on this tank whatsoever, unless they hit the turret and bounce. Uh, I damaged 4 enemies, I destroyed 2, got 470 spotting, mostly due to the uh, the tracking damage, and still made a profit, so not not bad, but uh, yeah, thank you for watching, hopefully you enjoyed the video, and my little rant at the end, I guess. Um, Yet again, thank you for watching. Feel free